to take the next step, right, to move towards a higher integral embrace in which we can actually bring the Western and Eastern Enlightenment in conversation with each other. And again, when I say Eastern Enlightenment, I mean Eastern Enlightenment in general, but also certain forms of mystical enlightenment that also appear in the West. But just for shorthand, I'm going to talk about Western and Eastern Enlightenment as these two basic prototypes. Right? The way to evolve consciousness, the way to bring Western and Eastern Enlightenment into a higher integral embrace, into a higher evolutionary unfolding, right? to, to invite a kind of awakening in which both the great goods of Eastern Enlightenment and the great goods of Western Enlightenment are actually held together, we need to understand and point out an essential mistake, an essential fallacy in both the Western understanding of Enlightenment and the Eastern understanding of Enlightenment. Both of them made an essential mistake, which doesn't undermine their core teaching, but limits their core teaching and allows room for the teaching of the other. And that mistake, the basic mistake of Eastern and Western Enlightenment on both sides of the street is a confusion or a conflation of separateness and uniqueness. So, so let me try and unpack that with you. On the Eastern Enlightenment side of the street, there's this need, a desire, right, a powerful invitation, a requirement to move beyond separate self because separate self is the source of all suffering. That's true. So I need to move beyond separate self to locate myself in my true nature. And my true nature is that I am a true self and the total number of true selves are one. And that's true. However, what's not true is that I, leave, that I need to leave my uniqueness behind. Okay? You see, in, in the general way that Eastern and mystical enlightenment is taught, you have to move beyond separate self. And so what you have to leave behind is your separate self, which is the unique you. Which is precisely why people reject enlightenment teaching because there's a sense if I'm not my unique me, my separate unique me, then who am I? Then I don't exist. And the fear of non-existence is so devastating, so oppressing, so oppressive that I leave enlightenment teaching behind. But actually, I can, you can evolve beyond your separate self, beyond your limited self-identification of a separate self. You can transcend, you can end the trance of separate self and emerge not merely as an abstract true self, part of the one, but as a unique self. A unique self means that you actually realize in your deeper awakening that you are a unique expression of true self, that every true self sees from a different angle, that every true self sees through a unique pair of eyes, that actually true self, which is essence, is also personal. True self essence appears personally, that actually you are the personal face of essence, which is utterly and irreducibly unique. That is to say, when I move from separateness to oneness, I don't move into a blah zone, spelled B-L-A-H, right, in which uniqueness, sharp distinction is lost. No, actually, right, every true self in the manifest world is actually a unique self because every true self, right, every expression of every facet of true self sees through a unique set of eyes, has a unique perspective on reality. So, when I move beyond my separate self in order to transcend suffering, I realize I'm part of the seamless code of the universe, but then I realize that this code of the universe is seamless but not featureless. And its features are your unique expression. Right? You realize, I realize as an awakened, enlightened realization that I am, that you are, a unique expression of all that is, that never was, is, or ever will be again that you and I are the personal faces of essence, right? that we are a unique letter in the cosmic scroll unlike any other, right? with, a, with a presence which is unique, which is a being expression that is our unique cellular spiritual signature, unlike that of any other that ever was, is, or will be. Wow. Okay? So... The East was right. You need to move beyond your separate self, but the East conflated separateness and uniqueness. And therefore taught 
I have one colleague teacher who would constantly teach there's no such thing as a unique spiritual experience. Or at the Course in Miracles, right? If you think you're special or unique, you will never find peace. That's the general enlightenment teaching, right? Of Theravadan Buddhism, right? Spirit Rock, right? In, in the Bay Area and Marin County, right? And countless other retreat centers, spiritual centers, the world over here in Holland and Germany, right? which teach that moving beyond your separate self, which is to, is to give up your uniqueness. And, and, and the world reacts to that and says, no, my uniqueness is who I am. I can't give that up. And the world's right. Because actually, the way the Enlightenment teaching is transmitted is wrong. You need to move past your separate self and then realize your awakened true self, which is your unique self, your unique expression, God's signature written uniquely all over you. Wow. That's a big deal. Right? So that's the correction. That's the dharmic correction. Right? By the word dharma, I mean the kind of the deep source code correction understanding on the eastern side of the street. The east was wrong when it conflated separateness and uniqueness. You can move beyond, you must move beyond your separate self, shatter the illusion of separateness, realize that you're part of a larger whole, but that you're a unique self, a unique part of a larger whole. Now on the other side of the street, the West, Western Enlightenment teaching made the same mistake in the same way, but on the other side of the street, confused or conflated separateness and uniqueness. Because what does the West say? The West says, in order to have a relationship, to have virtue, to have love between people, to have accountability, to have responsibility, you require two separate selves that each have their own inherent dignity and obligation. Well, that, 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 we understand that. And so therefore, the West says, to move beyond suffering, you need to affirm the separate self. But again, that's not true. You can actually affirm the dignity of relationship, hold people accountable, celebrate responsibility or virtue, love, not based on two separate selves being in relationship, but on two unique selves being in relationship. There's no need to be a separate self to actually be in relationship. I can actually experience myself with you together as part of the seamless coat of the universe. And then we realize, well, that coat is seamless, but not featureless. And we are each unique expressions, unique features in that seamless coat. We are each unique selves. And as unique selves that are not separate from each other, we relate to each other. And in that relationship, we create love and we create virtue and we create goodness. And we create accountability and we create responsibility. And so the West also confused separateness and uniqueness. And so what actually happens is, is that the, the best and highest understanding of Eastern enlightenment, which is the desire to move and the need to move beyond, to liberate yourself from separate self, is received and integrated with the, the best intuition and understanding of Western enlightenment, which is the infinite dignity of the individual. The adequacy and worth of the individual, but the individual is not a separate self individual, right? You are individuated, not as a separate self, but you're individuated as a unique self who's part of the seamless code of the universe. So the higher integral embrace of these two great enlightenment teachings meets in unique self. And once we affirm unique self, then the essential counterintuitive nature of enlightenment teaching is undermined and removed and dissolved because one doesn't need to give up one's uniqueness in order to realize one's enlightenment. One needs to give up ego. And what ego means is the contraction, N not the ego, which is the appropriately organized personality like that Otto Kernberg and other psychologists talked about. But ego in its negative sense is a contraction. The sense that all I am is a separate self, that all I am is a small self, that my identity is exhausted by being a skin encapsulated ego. That you need to give up. <laughs> but when you give that up, you realize your true nature. Your true nature as part of the seamless code of the universe, <laughs> excuse me, but as a, a, a unique feature of the seamless code of the universe. And so you claim all the goods of enlightenment. 
You claim the goods of transcending your separate self and moving beyond the grasping of the separate self ego. And you claim the good of the infinite dignity, adequacy, and worth of the individual who individuates whoever not separately, but as a unique self. And that introduces the genuine possibility of the democratization of enlightenment, which is the essential building block of an emergent world spirituality. And that's what we're going to talk about next.